Your social media, everything that you 
see about you. So, like, I don't know, like, hi, I'm Ricky Whittle, Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> but you're like, hashtag vegan, hashtag love it vegan, vegan's on my hat, it's on my car. I'm like, yo, here's, here's my Ford and, and it's chicken burger. <laughs> this is my jumper and it's got like, oh, bacon and eggs. <laughs> it's not, it's Top Gun, because I love Top Gun. Me too. Boom. Wait a minute, we gotta talk after this. Yeah, we do. Dude. You look a little bit like Charlie, you know, we, we, we could read that, like, Top Gun. I can get you a right. I mean, Ooh. you took my breath away when I saw you. <laughs> hey, hey, but up, but up, see what I did there? Yeah, you were singing it. <laughs> yeah, you got your, your fake thumb lights and everything. <laughs> hey, vegans, stay there! See? <laughs> vegans are so weak because they only eat leaves that she's like, I can't stand for too long. He's, he's talking to, I need to sit down here. <laughs> So, vegan. I'm not one of those vegans. I'm, I'm only joking, I'm only joking. But I do wonder why you put your preference on your social media. Hashtag vegan. It's everywhere. very annoying. It like, makes us all have a bad name. It's this for you and Crossfitters. Oh, I was just gonna say. <laughs> so, yo, I'm Chad, my Crossfit. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to like pull up some squeeze and like do stuff like that. <laughs> I, I'm what? <laughs> you, you, I, can, I mean, I don't mind like knowing your interests, right. you know, but like it's it's. Yep. <laughs> why, why why are you vegan? Because some people it's it's animals, some people it's medical. Oh, great costumes walking in, by the way. Can we have a pause for? Boom! Boom! I can't wait to wear that costume. Wait, what? No. <laughs> I wish. Your green lantern. Ooh, come on, John Stewart. Um, <laughs> I love my animal friends. I, I love my animal friends, and as much as I love meat, like that's my favorite meat and candy. I, I, when, I was, when I was in the hundred, my nickname was actually Sweet Meat, and it's not dirty. It's just because I like candy and meat. And like when I used to, like I actually had an order in the mornings for breakfast, and anyone else could order it. Like you could go up and go, could I have Ricky's meat box, please? And the catering knew exactly what to do. It's just a box of different meats. I just had bacon, turkey, everything. It was crazy. Um, and a side of Sour Patch Kids. And a side of Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> and Maltesers. Yeah, I see some Maltesers over there. Yeah, Melinda, you know. You know. Um, so, as much as I love meat, if I, I could never kill one, though. No. Like, if I, if I was stranded like Tom Hanks on a desert island and stuff, and like I was gonna. <laughs> Are you bringing me candy like a, like a crack addict? Like, excuse me, candy man. She was Do you think I need sugar right now? More energy? I'm lunging on stage. She's not asking me one question. What she did? I'm not answering it yet. Could have gone for 20 minutes. I've still, I've still got. She's dying right here. She's only had a salad this morning. So yeah, if I was, so if I was like, let's see, we're trying to keep her up. <laughs> So yeah, if I was in a desert island, I would literally die of starvation because I would have like cows and chickens and all this meat and I'd be like, I can't do it. I went to a friend's wedding and they had a spit roast, like, um, like a pig on a, on a stick sort of thing. And I love bacon. I couldn't touch any of it because I could see it. Because I could see it. He saw his face, that's why. I saw his face, it, 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 it's Alan. I, I can't eat Alan. It's got a face, it went to me. <laughs> I can't do it. So, I love animals and I respect what you do. I just don't know why you put it on all your socials and your hat and your car and everywhere. And tell people when it's your first, your first thing. So, anyway, so yeah, so, so I had a curry last night. Yes. And so I feel pretty tired. Leah, was it? With, with um, Lainey. 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 And, and I, she went, How, how spicy do you like it? I'm like, one, one to five. And me being me, it was like, five, bro. <laughs> and it was really, really amazing. It was a uh, butterfly belly or something like that it was called. Vietnamese, Vietnamese. Amazing. But as I was leaning over, I realized how spicy it was because my eyes started to really sting. And I woke up this morning and I feel like a girl just punched me in the face. <laughs> and I was doing selfies this morning by, by my table, by my booth. And I was like, are you going to open your eyes, Ricky? Like, why, why are you squinting at everything? They're all really puffy, and I think it's because of the spice last night. Yeah. So normally my eyes do sparkle, but um, they're a little bit tired today because of the spice from yesterday. So, first question, 30 minutes in, nailed it. Nice! <laughs> hey, sorry, one second. The woman over here who gave you the nerves, 
She was one of the ones who wanted the hug. I don't know if you saw, but when you left her, did she, she, I she was you. waving like a mad woman. Last one, because otherwise I'm this is redoing really the whole thing, but just answering from the crowd. I know, but she brought you in. And she fucked me up with candy. So do you know, in England, they were actually banned. Yes. Um, because they contained glass. Well, that's a good reason. What? Glass was found in, in the boxes, and so they banned it, actually, for a little while in England. Um, oh. <sighs> do you want my own stunts? Do you get paid more for that? Oh. There you go. Well, gotta be Thank careful. I, I fly to Toronto on Wednesday. I've got, I've got, I'm wrapped in cotton wool until I, I start work. <laughs> I'm not sure until I get to work. Go ahead, you push. Okay, I actually don't have a question, but you started talking about your love for meat, so I figured while you're in town, you should go to one of these Brazil grill places because this is what they do. It's non-stop meat. You give this pot. Oh, I know. What? Oh, you say okay. okay. I, I do Brazil. I, I just came from Brazil. Me and Zach Levery, uh, we were in Brazil, you know, in, in December. Me and my boy Zach. I was just fangirling in, in the green room with the murder. I was like, oh my god, Zach, he's so beautiful. <laughs> he is, he's so handsome. He got so big since Suzanne as well. I'm like, dude, you work out. Is he aggressive? Y'all are crossfit and vegan. I don't know if he is, he might be. Um, but yeah, I love Brazil and I love those all you need because I, I see it as a challenge and a way. I'm like Joey from Friends. Where did my money back? He takes the puck and he just flings it. I don't need this. I'm, I'm like, yo, why has this got red on it? I don't need it. Green all the way. And I just literally sit there and they go, you can't possibly eat anymore. I'm like, Watch. Challenge accepted. Let's do this. Have you have you ever eaten an ox, by the way? I would recommend that. Have I eaten an ox? No, 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 at ox. It's the best, in my opinion, it's the best steakhouse here in Portland. And I'm a foodie. That is one thing. I don't spend money on anything, but I will drop some coin on a good meal. Go ahead, you have a question over here? Well, since Ricky does smell so good. like <laughs> <laughs> a true story. I, I used to, I used to go commando a lot, and then skinny jeans came into play, and then I was like, "Yo, people that see too much." <laughs> I should start Aren't wearing, you glad you asked? Should start wearing underwear. So that's the cologne. So uh, the cologne is I basically run around a lot, and I just sweat the Um No, I don't tell anyone what I wear because uh, it's a mixture. I have a mixologist who does stuff for me. Uh, that's that's why are you selling that at your table? I know, right, bro? <laughs> Why am I not? Um, because I don't want everyone to smell like me. It's like my, it's my... I literally have my jar of my own, I mix my own fragrance. It's in my bag back there, for real. I love that. That's very cool. She does smell wonderful, too. She looks great, smells great. I'm its favorite guest, for real. Hey, I'm glad you made it in, I huh? feel... Like I'm in love. <laughs> That's wonderful. It's okay. It's good. We're good. How are you doing, sir? Good. You're good. See your trekkie. Trucker. Trucker. Oh, no, trekkie. I'm yeah, old school. Yeah, there is a difference. You're... Is there a difference between yes. a trucker and trekkie? Yes. yes. Please educate me. Okay. Uh, I'll ask hold on, hold on, young lady. Hold on, young lady. I'm asking the gentleman. She's coming. A trekkie likes the original Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Then like in the 80s, around the next generation people, yep. some people say, oh, I don't want to be a Trekkie, I'm a Trekker. So there's but bougie that's so much you fans. <laughs> you guys like to be special, it's like, oh, you're one of those fans? Oh, I'm an original. It's that sort of thing. Exactly. Oh, okay, I'm with you now. I appreciate that. I don't, I don't mug myself off like next time where I'm just like, yo, I'm a Trekkie. People are like, oh, really? <laughs> but yesterday, this girl... She told me, I like your costume. I said, thank you. And then she said, make it so. Oh, and I wanted to slap her. <laughs> because. Which we don't approve of because violence is not good, people. We turn the other cheek. But that with was, a hair flip. <laughs> See, 
Did you hear music or is it just me? <laughs> okay, okay. This, song, this lovely young lady was was uh, from Harry Potter yesterday. She's got wonderful eyes. They're like, they're like, aqua. <laughs> what is happening? I love that you're, you're, you're still holding. You can let go when it starts to get awkward. Like, it's okay. I, I, will, I won't be offended. I'll offer you any deal. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you got questions. Good luck with those. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on, my lovely aqua. Do you have that question? No. Oh, he's just facts. Yes. Yeah. He's best known in the United Kingdom for his role of Calvin Valentine in Red Arena. He was a model for Reebok. In 2009, he played second in the reality show. Fucking good dancing. That's a good fact. Um, it's mostly true. It's mostly true. You never, you never Google me. It's dangerous. Um, Lincoln was a great character. I loved it. Uh, my favorite parts: working with Maria, Maria Ab uh, uh, the Greek lady, Marie Abderopoulos. She, she's, that's a mouthful I to say. I can say cute puppy in Greek. It's Hanni Tomenos Kilaki. That's all I know in Greek. There you go. If you ever need to like, congratulate a dog in Greek, I've got you. <laughs> Congratulations, dog? No, it's cute puppy. Cute puppy. Oh. Hanni Tomenos Kilaki. What she said. <laughs> so I, I mean, I Why do you know that? <laughs> I covered the Olympics and I spent some time in Greece. So I learned so how to say red wine also, that's the other So red wine, cute puppy, but nothing about Olympians or athletes or... <laughs> okay. They only cover seven of them. Priorities. <laughs> um, so Marie, I love working with that girl. She was a lot of fun and her character was awesome. And I love that kind of chemistry that we had. I love working with... Um, power Oops, sorry. I'm not really. um, I love working with like powerful, you know, independent women who kind of... You can, you can combat against, and so that was a great chemistry that uh, I enjoyed with her. So um, there was that, and there's a lot of other casts. I, I miss working with a lot of the casts who um, have actually left now, which is fun. Um, so like Mike Beach, who played Pike and killed me. Um, as much as you all hate him, I love that guy. <laughs> He's the nicest dude ever. We like ride our Harleys before my bike was stolen. Oh, got stolen? I know, right? From my garage, that's why I had to not why I had to buy a new house, but <laughs> I went out. I just, like, my bike was stolen from a, from a like, apartment complex, and so I went out and bought the house. <laughs> I, used, I used to ride a Ninja 500 and I That'll screw you. You ride bikes too. Yeah, I keep my motorcycle endorsement. But I, no, no, I don't anymore because I dropped my 500, then I switched, uh, went down to a 250, and that was, and then it was just like, it's, it's not meant to be. I'm, I'm, I'm not nearly as good at it as I think I am. That's dangerous. That I'm sounds like me in most aspects. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, they say there's two types of riders, those who have fallen and those who are going to fall. So I just took the positive and said, look, I was due a big fall and injury, and as a, an actor, I'm not supposed to be riding a bike. Yeah. So we saved ourselves a, a, a dangerous fall. See? So that's There right. you go. So yeah, working with the cast and um, Marie Abderopoulos, Mike Beach, um, Chris Larkin, who played Monty as well, is funny as hell and annoyingly talented. Um, he can do everything. He can sing, plays instruments, he's just the nicest dude ever. Um, so I wish him luck in everything he does. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. <laughs> I like it, I like it. Next up, go ahead. Um, I was wondering about, um, I think it's episode two in season two, where they had you captured. Um, yeah. Was that yeah. Gods? Yeah. American Gods, yes. So if you could talk about that, how long were you in that contraption? So, that's the only time I got kind of annoyed with the show, <laughs> right? Because, well, number one, the art department are incredible. They make incredible sets, but they made that metal contraption out of metal, <laughs> which I'm holding up for four days. And I'm like, yo, this is TV. They're not going to see it if we paint some you know, plastic. Like plastic or something really light. Make it look like metal. That's what you do. <laughs> but, uh, and so I actually had to hold these things up, and there was a massive strain on my shoulders, like there was agony for the next week. Um, and I won when I when I read the script and I heard this was going to happen. As most actors, models, people who are going to take the shirts off and things, you like to prepare for it. You like to look as good as possible because we're vain as hell and insecure. Um, so I had a whole kind of diet. 
dehydration regimen where 10 days you out, you start to up your water. So like three, day, two days out, I'm on like 10 liters of water a day, so I'm eating five, every five minutes. <laughs> you cut all your carbs, and then the day before you stop drinking water, you're not drinking on the day. And two weeks before I said, this is what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna be very dehydrated. Can we kind of keep the shoot down to a minimum of like days? Um, blah, 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 lighting's gonna be up from the front, that way you get to contrast and everything. And then we shot for four days. So for four days I was on minimal water. I didn't drink the first day. I had one glass of water the second day. The third day I, was, I saw what the lighting was, which was they lit a black man in a dark room and a light behind his head. And I was like, yo, you can't see this. <laughs> and when you're thirsty and hungry, you get angry. <laughs> So Happy Ricky was like, Yo, bro! About your lighting. If you lit this room and I chose to do my acting in the next room, would you be pissed? He was like, well, that would just be not right. And I'm like, yeah! I feel like you're not appreciating the work I'm doing. So, um, that was the only time I, I had a little bit of grief with, with lighting. And, and so the next time they were like, yo, put the light on the room. <laughs> we don't want Ricky to get sensitive. <laughs> But yeah, that was a brutal, brutal scene. Um, but I loved it, and it, it was great. Um, that was that was very taxing because it was heavy metal that I was having to hold up. Um, I had to put myself in contorted positions, which I came up with, and I can't blame anyone else but me because I chose to do that for four days when I could have just stayed there and be like, "Ow, it hurts." But I was like, "No, yeah, maybe if you hang me up and then keep the box away, so like I'm just hanging." Stupid idea, Richard. Uh -huh. Stupid. He addresses um, himself as Richard. When, when, when I'm in trouble, it's Richard. Yeah. So that was a brutal, brutal like week of shooting for sure. And then we finished it off where the train crashed, and I had to shoot at like four o'clock in the morning, where they buried me in sand, and I had to get out of the, this this thing, which didn't even make the cut. Um, so that that shot, when I was shot four four in the morning dehydrated, buried in sand, in some Canadian wasteland. It didn't even make a show. <laughs> I wish they don't do that. So they don't do it enough. They used to be my favorite thing. I'm like, I think it might be in a box set, stuff like that. I'm gonna jump off you because I'm probably very warm. Because I'm, I'm getting flustered. I'm, I'm getting flustered. She, she out she didn't out awkward me, she out- Lasted. Out cooled me. I'm melting. Go ahead, you have a question? <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Oh. I love you, man. Well, thank you. I love you in general. Okay, so back to the series again. I was going to ask you. Are you going to be serious? Have you seen what we've been doing? Short sure answer, I follow the money. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, on, on a serious, when, when you're at my, my level, you know, I'm not Johnny Depp, I'm not Will Smith. I don't have scripts just coming to the door like that. Like, yo, you want to be Green Lantern? I'm like, please can I be Green Lantern? Please can I be one? Please can I do this? Please can I work for you? Please can I work with them? Um, so, I just got told I just do pain and torture very well. <laughs> and, uh, in, in the industry, you get, you get stereotyped very quickly. You become that guy or that girl. Um, I do it myself, you know? Like when you watch actors and actresses and you're like, that's a comedian. And when it starts to go seriously, you're like, mm, I just want you to tell me a joke. Yeah. Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart, just tell me a joke. Don't do anything serious because I don't buy you. Yeah. And it's not that he's not a good actor at serious stuff. He's, he, I, just, I just wanted to tell me a joke because that's how I met him and that's how I saw him first, you know, and so it's been good for me to establish myself as, as serious and American, you know, because even today, a fan was like, I did not know, you were British. <laughs> you have an accent. I'm like, ta-da. <laughs> because in the industry, if people know you're British, when you go for auditions and, and you meet people and you, you'll go in British and your accent could be flawless. You go to America and they're like, oh my, you're really good. I can, I can tell. I can, no, you can't. 
they, they, but they can't tell. They, 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 they think it's, they're, 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 not, they're not good at their job if they can't tell that you're putting on an accent. So if you just go in American, and then at the end of the thing you go, oh, cheers, lovely, appreciate it. And they're like, wait, 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 you have an accent? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh my god, that was amazing, blah, blah, blah. And then that's a whole different thing, they're amazed. But if you go in British and do flawless, they feel like they have to go, I can tell, but your accent's good, yeah. So it was nice that I got to establish myself as American so people buy the characters straight away. I just, I like series, I love doing all that. I appreciate it. I do paint very well. I've experienced a lot of it. Um, but yeah, I would love to do comedy. I would love to do, you know, romantic comedies. I love like working with, working with ladies and, and mugging myself off, to be honest, you know. People who don't know me or don't know my private life, they think I'm a stoic, you know, character. They think I, I, I love myself. I miss my appearances and stuff. I'm like, I only go to the gym because my character's always got to show off. I am vain, but like, if I wasn't doing this job, I would not be in the gym. I hate working out with a passion. <laughs> I hate it. I hate work. The only reason I do work out for real is because my diet sucks. I eat meat and candy. I have to in the gym. <laughs> don't do as I say. Don't do as I say. See, I do as I, as I do. Do as I say. Eat healthy. But yeah, I, I, I do the Stoics characters because that's what I'm doing well at the moment. But I want to branch out and, and do other things. Um, but for now, Shadow might smile a little bit in season three, but he will go through a lot more pain. Oh. I mean, the, the arc, I can't wait to see how the arc of the show develops in relation to the book. I'm a huge, huge Neil Gaiman fan. What is it like working with Ian McShane, who is so brilliant, oh. like the two Deadwood, and the page, just some guy, may or may not have an accent. Ian, Ian. Oh, the Wednesday fella. No. <laughs> um, so, Dad, okay, duh. Spoiler alert! Um, no, I mean, I was the first cast for American Gods a month before anyone else, and he was the second cast, and my mum actually said, you know who'd be a great Mr. Wednesday? Ian McShane. Really? Two weeks later, he was cast, and I was like, oh. You're not <laughs> this. I was like, what? Well, she, she actually said I ruined the book for her, because she was like, oh, I love Shadow. I thought he was kind of hot, and now he's my son. That's just weird. <laughs> <laughs> she generally said you've ruined the book for me. She said I had a crush on Shadow and now it's just weird. Um, but Ian McShane is amazing and when I heard he was cast, I grew up with him as Lovejoy, you know, he said Deadwood to America. Like, he's an idol of mine. Like, we, we, I joke, I'm like, you should be sorry Ian McShane. He's like, oh, fuck that, no, I don't want to be fucking knighted, that's bullshit. Like, it's not how he speaks, it is. Um, <laughs> but he's a lovely dude, and, he, and he's very serious and intense when he does his, his acting, you know, he's, he comes across as very serious, but he's the loveliest guy ever, and we hit it off straight away because we're both from Manchester, you know, we're both Man United fans in, in football, soccer, as you say, because you guys are crazy, and your football is, you know, the football that you use with your hands and you throw, which has got nothing to do with football, but whatever. I digress. Um, we use our feet to play football. <laughs> football. <laughs> football. <laughs> Do you see a pattern? <laughs> so I don't know why that killed that. I've been in America nine years, it still gets to me. Okay. Um, but no, he's an so evil shame. We just have a lot of fun. He's a, he's a great guy and we prank around a lot. And Do you? He's 99% just pure like jokes and then 1% old school Hollywood where he's just like, Do this like this! Um, because he's just, he's done everything. He's directed, produced, acted in everything. So he knows how it all should go. Does he ever on the set stop a scene? Well, no, that's not what would happen here. Does he actually sort of take the reins or does when he? When doesn't he <laughs> stop it? No, yeah, but he does because he's got great advice. He's done it all and you know, he, he gives me great advice and it's the greatest education a young actor could ever have is to have Ian McShane going, I wonder if you would blah, blah, blah. And you're like, yes. <laughs> And then people are like, oh, that was a great scene. I'm like, I know, thank you, yeah. I, I came up with it myself. Because <laughs> Ian McShane's not on social media, so I can claim everything. <laughs> but his wife is, and so his wife dresses me up all the time. So Gwen, his wife, is beautiful and amazing, I love her to bits. Um, she, she, like, she secretly like, looks on social media, and then she'll tell him stuff that I've said. Story. And he'll go, what is this you talking about? Like, What's this nonsense worth? I heard you were saying this. I'm like, Gwen, you grassed me up. So yeah, I have to be careful now and then what I say with Ian, because uh, 
he has spies everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, I love it. Go ahead, your question. I'm ready. Oh, hey! Not for you. Not for me? Okay, and she's asking for you. Oh, pardon? Oh, what, what, what is the badge? There's a Comic-Con badge. I don't know, what's it say on it? It's Dragon Ball Z. Yes. Yeah. Green Lantern, why don't you use your powers and make one? I'm like, oh, I've lost my badge, it's okay. Dark is like, what, what is that? Give me a badge. Why not? Thank you for coming out and waiting because I've been talking so much and we've only answered one question in four hours. <laughs> and I'm sorry if I'm sort of repeating the previous question, but on the 100, what was your favorite part about filming that and least favorite? Least favorite was, uh, favorite was, was Maria Droplis, Lintavia, working on that chemistry and the fact, and it's kind of jointly with the least favorite, is that when everything went south in season two and three, uh, with the producer, the showrunner, um, working with Marie to still make Lintavia work because they were, we had a storyline that just didn't happen, um, unfortunately for her as well. I mean, you can do what you want with me, but when it affects other actors, you know, it's, it's, it's done. So working with her to kind of make Lintavia still relevant and to work on that chemistry, like simple things like a glance or holding hands or doing stuff in the back in the background of scenes, you know, finding ways to make that still work, that it's still happening, to, and to add depth and layers that he wouldn't write. Um, so she's phenomenal, love working with her. Um, it's just a shame that they didn't invest in a relationship that everyone wanted. Yeah. Everyone wanted to see that. Yeah. And then he came up with a weak excuse of, I just didn't have anything to write, the storyline was just going down a dead end. Really, bro? They could have had a spin off on their own. You know, just the two of them, you know, so for me, you know, his excuses didn't make sense because for me that was one of the best, it was the only relationship on the show, real relationship, I mean everyone's got their yeah. ships, but that's the only real one that was going down and they had strength and depth and it wasn't, it was an even relationship, like I said, she was powerful, independent, yeah, he taught her to fight and all this business, but they were on a level together and they challenged each other and made sacrifices for each other and they promoted a good story where you know, women are powerful, men are powerful, they can work together, they make sacrifices each other for each other. Even to, even to the very end, you know, they sacrifice for each other. And for me, I, I think you need to promote more positive, positive relationships like that, instead of kind of someone cheating on someone just for drama and things like that, you know. They, I love that storyline. So for me, the fact that that couldn't grow into something really beautiful uh, was a missed opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. How you doing? I'm good, how are you? Very well, thank you. I'm still sat next to this Adonis. <laughs> um, sorry if my voice is bad. I went to a concert. It's very sexy though. It's very husky. Like Marge Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> I find Marge sexy, right? I mean, it's a good thing. <laughs> Wasn't into her hair. I liked it when Marge used to put her hair down. I was like, damn, yes. Marge. <laughs> Why did you just let it go? <laughs> She absolutely loves How you doing, boo? <laughs> and the girls who oh, mixed her also adores you so much. Yeah, I just used to play the crochet. Sup? Sup, bro? And my question is, what was going through your head when you were writing the set of The Hundred and American Gods when you started filming? In The Hundred, the first thing that was going through my set was, Maria Droplis is a badass because my first scene was episode five. The first time you see Lincoln is when Marie, uh, Marie, what's her name? I'll tell you. Has fallen down a cliff and she's unconscious. And when she wakes up, there's Lincoln. And like, he's, I, I did this big scary, like, I'm down, like, look, check it around, and I grow, and I'm massive. And people are like, bro, you're like eight foot tall. And so when they meet, they're like, bro, I thought you'd be taller. <laughs> That's what people say a lot, I'm like, yeah, go yourself. <laughs> so you'd be more polite. Um, the my fault Marie's this big, so I look massive. But when she was lying in the grass, like unconscious, there were like rats and stuff right, like running around. I went, whoa, Marie, um, it's a rat right by your head. And she was like, yeah, it's been there all night. <laughs> I was like, 
oh, she's one of those. <laughs> so that was my first thought, Maria. I was like, she's just a badass. She is Octavia. She hunts, she's from Canada. She's like friendly for no reason. She's awesome. <laughs> my first, uh, first day on set of American Gods was working with Jonathan Tucker, an incredible actor. He's going to be in the new Charlie's Angels. He's the villain. Um, because he can do anything, he's amazing. Um, and we were in prison, and I was just like, this is awesome. Um, I'm working with an incredible like, stand-up of actor. So I'm like, this is my first day. I'm working with Jonathan Tucker. Tomorrow I work with Ian McShane, and I've got Gillian Anderson on Thursday, and I've got Peter Stamar on Friday. I'm like, <laughs> and look at my bank account. No, um, I'm just kidding. I was just I was bringing it back, it's like, you know, bringing it back full circle. I got you, boo. Um, and it, it just got me really excited because I was like, wow, this is just a different level of show. Because we shot like one, two scenes uh, a day, like a movie. And it's just a huge production, you know, one episode is probably like the whole budget for a season in the hundred. Um, so it's just got me very excited about what we can achieve and that didn't disappoint because that was an incredible first season. And uh, I'm looking forward to season three, man. I fly up on Wednesday. Uh, hence my, my growth. They said, just let it grow and then we'll figure it out when you get to set. So, because Shadow's gone into hiding, so he's, he might look different in season three. Thank you so much. I love you more. I do. No, really. Hi, Puppy. What's up, wifey? You can always find me. You just follow that light. That's why you have the sunglasses now, because it's just like, it's all right. That looks awesome. I heard what you said about Marge. It's the last that I remember. Uh, Listen, it was one time. She, it wasn't her, it was me, but I promise, I'm sorry. Listen, baby, what about the leprechaun, huh? Oh. Yeah. What, what about the little man? I'm called Shadow. He's a leprechaun. I'm joking, that's Pablo Schreiber. He is six foot five, Matt Mountain. He's big in every department. And congrats to him on Halo. He's gonna be leading Halo, so check that out. Pablo Schreiber, possibly the best actor I've ever worked with. Really? Incredible in every way. Pablo Schreiber, love it. Sorry, Wifey. Yeah, I do have a question. Um, with the beard and talking about Ian McChain and Deadwood, if you were in Deadwood, what do you think your character would be? And then the second part of my question is, do you want to make my heart beat again? <laughs> Number one, in Deadwood, that's like Old Wild West, right? Yeah. So I was probably like making railroads or something. Um, oh, it just got real dark. <laughs> It's history, America! It's history! You did this! <laughs> I'm British, I can say um, No, I, I, I've not actually seen Deadwood. I'm, terrible, I'm a terrible person. Like, Ian's always like, oh no, he's definitely He got me into John Wick. Oh. I was like, I don't want to watch John Wick. It's Keanu, I mean, I, I loved him in like, he's Blue and Ted. And, yes. and he's like, no, 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 it's a, it's a good movie. You should see a kid. He always calls me kid as well. Like, even when he's like texting me, he's, like, he's an emoji king, by the way. He's really? like, oh, it's what's, his favorite, what's his emoji of choice? Sunglasses. He's always like, sunglasses. Uh, or he'll gift me. Like, he loves gifts. And I, I, I sent him a gift of himself. <laughs> I won't say what he said back. <laughs> it was x rated. <laughs> But he, he, he was like, go watch it. And so I watched John Wick and I'm like, it's the most amazing thing ever. And now they've made three. I'm like, I want to be in the fourth. Um, you put some pieces of armor in. And, and Ian in. Keanu, come on, three times the charge. Um, what did she say, sorry? Your mom should cast you. Uh, my mom, my mom should cast me in that. She's you know, very good. You John Wick 4. Yeah, you should have words. <laughs> um, so I should watch Deadwood because that's what he's, he's very famous for. Um, and I'd probably watch it just for him because he is incredible. Um, so I'd love to just do anything like that. I actually started riding horses in the hundred because I was told I was going to ride a horse and then the storyline got cut. So I had all like, like 10 horse riding lessons. That's fantastic. Because I'm in, because like, I want to do my own stunts and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm very into, like, I'm going to Daniel Day Lewis the heck out of this. I'm not going to have no one ride the horse but me. Um, and then uh, they cut it. So I'd love to do a Wild West where I'm you know, riding horses and stuff because I've got the skills that I'm not using. I pay for it. Um, and I will make your heart beat later. Wait, wait, don't go, don't go. What do don't you go, think? Laura. What do you think he would 
play in Deadwood. But I love the series, so now I'm curious. I think he would be, I think he might go for Al. I think he might, you okay. know, come at him. I, I'll swear to so, the so, so, character. I, I, what would I do? Oh, she, she's just talking about in the show. I'll swear to yeah. is Ian McShane. So yeah. he's a lead character. So, so what would I I think you'd come for him. You might. I'd come for him? Yeah. And kill him? <clears throat> no, he's, that's, that's, he's, I don't think you'd kill him. There's no way. Al doesn't. There's no way. Whoa, 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 whoa. He is like up to here on me. You can look at Sean at least. <laughs> I'm just saying. Wow. I thought we had something. You changed. <laughs> You also like, said Marge was sexy, so I'm just questioning. Well, I guess she's just as, as sexy as you. Oh, thank you. That's right. <laughs> Marge has never done a slow motion. Hand, <laughs> okay, go ahead. You have a question? Hi. Thanks for coming to Portland, first of all. Thank you for coming to Rose City Comic Con. Way too short. Um, Besides Neil Gaiman's original source material, and you mentioned Ian, what inspiration for playing Shadowman? What did you draw from? What did you think about? Could you talk more about that, please? Um, I worked with Brian Fuller and Michael Green, and the first director, who was uh, David Slade, uh, the first three episodes of season one. And my original auditions, of which I had 16, oh I'm still quick and twisted because oh. other people just got offers. Oh. Oh, it um, but I, I got the chance to work with those producers um, because my first auditions were very much Shadow from the Book, who was very monotone, very flat. And it, you listen to like the audiobooks, which is a lot, a lot of people's first experience. Shadow Moon just talks like this. He's very cool. Hey, Laura, what's going on? You know, you're a dead wife and you're in my hotel room. This is weird, but I still love you. It's, it's very like that. And I kept, and they said, you look great and you sound great, but you need a more pop for. Um, for, the, for TV, and so I was able to work with Brian and Michael to just, and the nicest things that, that those two guys said, and I love those guys to bits, they're incredibly talented, is that we love Ricky and we love Shadow. If you can mix the two together, I think we found our lead character. And I was like, you love me, you really love me. <laughs> and so we just worked on kind of making that pop, not too much, and we worked away, we worked backwards, because we know where Shadow's gonna be, and so we just peeled him down, so that season one we had this shell of a man, and then every season I'm slowly adding in more. So season two was very much anger and frustration. Uh, now he believes in the gods and the world he's in. He doesn't understand. Now he wants answers because he's very intelligent. Season three, he believes. Now he understands about the world. Now he needs to figure out where he fits in it because he's just found out all this new information about himself. Um, but he's also escaped. So we're going to see a shadow who's not bogged down with all the, 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 the gods and all the, the, the craziness. So. I get to add a bit more humor and fun, and maybe some love. Sorry, Woo. sorry, Laura. I'm just saying. <laughs> Shadow Man, get some season three, uh, and it ain't gonna be you. No. <laughs> I'm joking. It might be. Me? I got left time. You had. Rapid fire, we can talk quicker. Okay, so my question is about the uh, politics in American culture on American Gods. Is that something that you have a conversation about before shooting, and how does that affect your performance? I hope someone figures it out before shooting, because uh, I wouldn't want to ad lib on that. It would be a lot more controversial. Um, <laughs> But no, we've got incredible writers, and Chick Egg is, is helming uh, season three with an incredible writing team. And when I went into that writing room, I felt real intelligence and experience. And so they want to tell the story. They don't shy away from sensitive topics. We need to be talking about race, religion, faith, um, homophobia, you know, sexism, all, all the kind of things that gun control, everything that's important and going on in America and in headlines, because as soon as we stop talking about it, the bad people win. And you know we need equality for everyone. We need to kind of like protect each other and look out for each other. You know, not you know every, it's 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 never you know you, you don't realize the loss until, until like it's it's, a, it's all people in power who are losing the, this power that are kicking off. You know, they, they they're the ones who don't like equality. You know, so when you bring people down, of course they're going to kick off. Um, but we need to keep having this conversation, keep it going out there and making the right choices so that everyone's got a say, so everyone's got a voice, and that everyone's got something to relate to on TV. So. 
you know, I'm very proud of our show with, with all the, you know, the, the, the themes that we put forward, you know, the first ever gay Muslim scene on TV, shouldn't be the first time ever, it's 2019, right? That's the world today. But we're in a world where we should have female leads, we should have gay, lesbian, non-binary, we, we, we should have everything on TV so that every single kid in the world looks onto a TV somewhere or a movie and goes, they're like me. You know, because as a kid, I looked at Will Smith and I was like, oh wow, I can be, a, I can be an FBI agent or I can be a detective and I've got people at home going, Richard, no you can't, you gotta do this. And I'm lucky that I had a mom who said, forget those idiots, you can be whatever you want to be. And I looked up to people on TV and I was like, wow, I can do this and this. So hopefully, what we're doing now, we've got kids at home who are going, yeah, oh, I can be an ex-con who believes in gods. <laughs> but you know, just, just have something to relate to. So um, it's a very important conversation that we do have on the show. And we, as, as much as we want to entertain, we still want to show that there's representation for everyone. Go ahead. Hi. Hey, what's up, Scott? Um, are you able to say hi to my mom over there? She's sitting in front of the guy with the orange shirt. Hi, hi mom. Her name's Jenny. Hey, so, Jenny. How you doing? <laughs> so this is my first time ever asking a celebrity a question, and it's going to be a very stupid question. So, no stupid questions. Fair. <laughs> But what would you do if you were not able to have candy or meat at all anymore? Oh. Easily. Die of starvation. Oh. <laughs> I mean, could I have pizza? Burgers? Fries? Oh, like, no burgers, but like fries. Is it vegan? I mean, I didn't. Uh. Heck, uh, <laughs> hey, you know what? South Patch kids are vegan. They're gluten free and all vegan and stuff like that. So I could have South Patch kids. <laughs> Just saying. Um, I don't like you talking to South Patch kids. I'm looking for a sponsorship. Um, but no, yeah. Um, you, you have to adapt at the end of the day. I taught myself to drink um, green tea and I taught myself to eat. Like when I broke my leg, uh, I couldn't work out, I couldn't do too much, so I had to fix my diet. My mom started making me omelets and I stuffed them full of cheese and meat and because I hate eggs, but I was able to figure out now I can actually, I can eat omelets. You train the body, the taste buds change every seven, seven years, so I would find a way to survive because I'm a survivor. We're put on this planet to survive. And we go through bad days, no matter what's happening to us, we will all get through it because that's what we do. Yeah. You're, you're up, we're going to clear this room right quick. Go ahead. Wait, one second. Go ahead. Um, can I give you a good luck turn? Yes, you may. Was that all? Yeah. That's that was all. Yeah, how, how quick was that? <laughs> we were in yesterday, weren't we? Hello, my lovely. Yeah, yeah. Bring it back in. How you doing? She did her own makeup. She did great. She's going to be a great makeup Woo! artist in the future. And we're going to work together. That's true. So, little zombie from Zombie Girl. Can we take a selfie? Can we? Please. He's going to be with me all day. Oh. 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 Oh.